I turn this spot into this 900 square foot building. In this video, you will see start to finish of the outside. Check out my other videos too. I go into greater detail and list the materials and fasteners. We break ground and it's lightning and thunder. Maybe a sign I shouldn't be doing this. I have rehabbed a couple houses, including a house from the 1850s, but this is the first time I've ever built something from the ground up. I hired people to do the concrete work, the electrical, and the mini split install. I hired this concrete company, and I'm glad I did. You should not do this work yourself. I don't know what you're supposed to do here. That's what experience is. You know what right looks like. These guys hacked at the shale we have here in Northeast Pennsylvania for days. We do a frost protected shallow foundation with a four foot wall around three sides. Thank you to Chris and Dylan surface. You guys did a great job. We put two inch rigid foam underneath the slab and there is two inch foam around the sides that go two feet down. What do you tell the concrete delivery guy? I want 1,000 square feet of cement. Uh, they don't know who you are. If you're a homeowner, it seems like you need like five guys to help you. What is this guy doing right here? No idea. They had tools I don't have. They had this giant vibrator thing that vibrated all the air out of the walls. You also need to put plastic over the cement while it's drying. Um, the water tries to escape the cement and then the plastic just keeps it from escaping, makes it stronger, better. I didn't know this. And then these walls that they built, how do you build this and what looks right? Can you rent these walls? I mean, you got to own them, I guess. Hire a concrete company, in my opinion. These guys did a great job. Everything was straight. Um, I put these bolts in so I could fasten the sill plate. I had to pick up this foam, which was super fun. Besides rigid foam underneath the slab, I also put it on the outside of the concrete wall. We throw in a French drain while everything's open. There's the finished building. Let's go back to building it. I built the headers while the concrete guys were here. And these guys, before they left with their equipment, helped me move all my building supplies onto the cement pad. You need to straighten these bolts. Um, the internet says put them in straight when the concrete's wet. You don't have time to do that. I get to start building. This was my favorite part, doing the framing. I added a sill gasket because I want this building to be high performance and to be airtight. This is built to have a 212 pitch roof. And I framed 24 inches on center, which is considered advanced framing. You should get a moisture meter. If you have a wood stove, you can check your firewood. But also, uh, the lumber could have been loaded on Friday and then sat in the rain all weekend. You have this super wet lumber, so you can check it and make sure it's not going to shrink um, after you do a bunch of framing. I wanted to use 4x12s, but they were $250 a piece, so I didn't want to spend three grand on 4x12s. And this engineered lumber is engineered. It's actually one and seven eighths by 12 and a quarter. Um, I use these and I also made this form you just saw to cut all of the LVLs. I did them 32 inches on center. I bought this billboard to cover the building while I'm building it because I'm building it myself and it took forever. So it's definitely going to rain while I'm building it. I got these two by tens from New Hampton Lumber in New York and I got a great deal on them. So I put them over the LVLs that are the roof rafters. Instead of putting insulation in between the rafters and seeing drywall on the ceiling, it's going to remain open like an old barn. 
So I put these two by tens across, I nailed them, and I think it looks cool. What do you think? Check it out from the inside. That's how it ends up. I never do anything else on the ceiling inside this conditioned space that has heating and air conditioning. I do three layers of rigid foam with staggered seams that are all taped. First, I put down felt. So if, if the wood continues to shrink at all, you'll just see black felt and you won't see any foam. I scoured the internet for days trying to figure out how to build a box around this 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 foam. I don't the internet says to build a box around the foam. If you're doing an inch and a half of foam, you could put two by fours on the flat. I figured out this and then I went nuts and I had all these two by tens scraps. So I went around the entire outside and I mean, it made it easier to do the overhang cause I could just screw in anywhere. I didn't have to find uh, framing to screw into anyway. So zip system is the greatest. I taped all the seams and then I went around with the sausage gun and liquid zipped all of the screw holes. And then I started working on the walls. Maybe I should have done the walls first and then the roof, but I wanted to get it like dried in as soon as possible. While I'm doing all this, I have to freaking keep up with our firewood. We didn't have enough firewood for the winter. Zip system is about the same as half inch plywood. Um, you don't have to do house wrap. Screw hole. You can have a hundred inches of fluffy insulation. You're not going to keep your house warm. You need to make it airtight. Zip system's great. Let's skip to the finished building. Okay, let's rewind. Okay, so we have zip system around the entire outside. We have taped the seams and we have liquid nailed and the sausage gun leaves just this for waste. This little cap here. This was the thing that was the biggest mistake of this project. The guy that has the home performance channel, he mentioned this before I started this project that he would never do this type of applied overhang again. I did it anyway, and he was totally right. I messed with this for days. I mean, it came out okay in the end, but I don't know. This is how I felt. It ends up looking okay in the end. Uh, at the same time, I did two layers of rigid foam on the tall wall. And also, I hired somebody to dig for the electric and the internet to be run to this building. This is the best way to cut the sheathing if you lay it over the window holes and don't cut it first before nailing it. Pop a 16-penny uh, nail into each corner from the inside, then run a chalk line around it and snap it, then cut it with a circular saw that's just deep enough for the sheathing. It starts freaking snowing. I'm playing with this overhang for so long. And you need an overhang. Not having an overhang is almost as dumb as shipping container homes. The electrician gives me a hand here because he sees me struggling with it all by myself. We end up getting more snow than we've ever gotten. We get three feet of snow on this roof that just has zip panels taped and liquid zip. The outside layer of rigid foam is foil faced and the windows are taped so it does fine getting wet. The electric company comes, the internet company comes, I get electric and internet. So I'm stoked. Um, what a great product Huber Zip is. It lasts through all of the snow and kept the inside of the new building dry. I fasten these furring strips through the foam into the sheathing and framing and go through all that through the winter. It was too cold to install the roof. You look at all that snow. I constantly have to fix the camera because of squirrels and birds. Finally, it's warm enough in March and we can do the three ply roof. This is a 212 sloped roof, so I used low slope type roofing. I needed a hand for this. 
It's a giant sticker that if you lay it down crooked, you'll never get it back up. You have to roll it. I was able to rent a roller from down the road. I think it came out good. Here's me putting the drip edge on. I don't know how you cut it where it ends perfectly over the drip edge. There's thermal bridging from the screws I used to fasten the zip system down. Next, I could put the trim around the windows and doors and corners. I got a deal on James Hardy fiber cement siding. If you're butting the ends together, you need to cut some felt paper and nail it behind the ends. I also put screen at the top and bottom to keep uh, bugs out. You nail right on the nail line. I use two inch ring shank nails to nail the siding through the furring strips. Worth every penny were these gecko gauges that held the siding for me while I nailed it. Check them out. They attach to the row underneath that you just did, so every row is perfect. I went around at this point and cut all of the sloppy roofing that was over the drip edge. And here it is. It looks really neat. Check it out. It looks fine. I don't know how professional roofers do it. Are you able to cut it perfect while you're installing it? And also, what do you do here? Do you cut the trim first, like you do the windows and the corners? Or do you try to cut the fiber cement siding perfectly against the top and then just put caulk against it? I cut the siding the best I could and then laid the trim over top of it. I think it came out okay. I did these sideways patio doors as windows. If you were to call a window company and ask for seven foot wide windows, they'd probably charge you three grand a window. This was some extra work, but I think it looked really cool. There's a detailed video about it on my YouTube channel. Go check it out. Also about the catatat I made. You have to do a starter strip for the siding. There it is. Here is me installing the siding on the taller wall. And around the catatat and the garage. I caulked around the windows and the siding. I sanded it here and it's getting ready for paint. The best way to cut masking tape around the window is to go just past it and then cut with this utility knife. It ends up looking really neat like this. And then you do another layer with some masking paper. It took me maybe an hour to do all the windows and doors. I designed this so I could paint everything, the overhang and below the siding where I'm going to veneer some cement. I was able to buy a paint sprayer and learn how to use it. You could do it too. It wasn't hard. How do you think it came out? I probably wouldn't paint a house black, but this is a garage and studio for me to jam and make music in. So I think it was cool. And I really enjoyed getting paint from Sherman Williams. I'm not going to get paint anywhere else from now on. Uh, these sideways patio doors... I think they came out kind of cool. It was worth the extra effort to frame around them. I mean, they almost costed nothing. Both of them were 150 bucks. All of the windows I used were found locally on Craigslist or Marketplace. This door had a grid over the glass. It was quicker to tape over the whole thing and then just paint it by hand with a brush. If you miss, you can just use a razor blade to get the paint off the glass. Here I am cementing over the metal lath that I use cement screws to fasten. Please check out my detailed videos about this. Um, it was quite the journey. A cat litter box is the perfect thing to carry around your cement. It came out like this. It doesn't look good. I used veneer stone quickcrete. Maybe it looks like someone trying this for the first time. Uh, maybe I used the wrong product. Mike Haddock, who is also in Northeast Pennsylvania, has a YouTube channel, and he is the guy to check out 
if you're trying to fix up your driveway or do anything with stone or cement. Um, he talked about making this Portland paint and it saved this wall that I did. You got to wet it really good and you mix up with a lot of water, some Portland cement, and you just slop it on all kind of, all kind of gross like this. Slop it on. And I was happy with the results. Um, you know, it was a great way of saving the job I did. I've never done cement work really before. And maybe that's why I came out wrong and gross. Um, I think it looks good. Here I am wetting it. Really, you got to really wet it if you're going to do cement over cement. Look how it came out. I think it looks cool. Before, after. So now that I'm happy with the cement work, I cover up the bottom to make it look nice, like you see here on the left. The concrete I parged over the foam is approved for ground contact. This is before the gutter and after. I paid someone to do the gutter. It's another thing you should never do yourself. It wasn't expensive. They came, they installed it in like 10 minutes. You just don't have the tools for it to bend metal like that. That's my video. Check out the other one. Subscribe.